guys welcome back into another video i had to take a, a small little uh two break two day break sorry uh to just recuperate my mind and um just think about what my path forward is that i wanted to take on uh weathering waves and uh it brought me to this conclusion that i feel like there is a certain method or i guess certain way that feels like it is the most beneficial for us to be taking right now now that we've ran out of um you know more of the grind session that we have in the game where we're having a, a smaller amount that we need to log in because we've accomplished all of the story uh we've already kind of min max the hologram bosses that we can take on for right now our tower of adversity is probably what it's going to look like until reset and then hopefully by the end of next reset we'll have a little bit more progression those are the people that haven't knocked out everything already obviously more geared to like lower spenders slash free to play and i wanted to take this time to kind of go over my thought process on what i feel like the most beneficial use of um stamina is or wave plates and I, I was thinking because right now we have the event so obviously uh you want to expunge three of those attempts for those events which they take up a pretty decent amount of your stamina for the day uh while this is out uh, if you still have the um you know wave plate little cubes that you can use to get more uh and go throughout the day then great you have those but if you've already ran through them what should you really be focusing on uh is it just continuing to like min max our echoes or is it more beneficiary to you to go ahead and knock out the things that are more guaranteed and what i mean by that if we go in and take a look at our resonators um we have our echoes which obviously is going to give a ton of stats in return that allow us to progress a little bit more and stuff like that um gives you your overall build and everything but what i've come to find out or not found out, but what I've come to, to notice, I guess, from me doing this on a day-to-day -day basis, is that this feels, uh, it 100% is, it feels less guaranteed uh, than just going down the path of other things. So right now, we're trying to build uh, two to three teams, so that way the next reset of Tower of Adversity will be a little bit easier for us, or at least we'll have a little bit more resources available in terms of like different characters and teams that we can build around to allow us to progress further on since that is truly the end game along with the holograms which the holograms seem like a damage check along with the later ends of tower adversity then these would be the things that we're working to accomplish right now uh building up into the next two weeks or two and a half weeks until the next portion of the story and the next events and stuff come out uh, we have a couple good events right now, like the little running one is a, a great little, you know, 30 seconds, one minute at most. You go and knock that out, you get some resources. But once you do those things, you're back in the same routine of logging on and where do I spend my wave plates? What I have found to be like the, it, the best process or the best path forward uh, for people who are going to have limited spend or limited resources is go ahead and knock out as much as you can all of your talents because these talents or the the, the forte they they give decent um stats they give us very decent return on our uh you know investment into the time of wave plates and stuff like that whereas if you're going into echoes um it's not 100 percent guaranteed like right now i've been building yinlin and my overall stats with her is looking like this no food buffs or anything like that we did pull her weapon her weapons at level 70 so we got 30 crit rate from that but overall this is what we're working with on her and i've already re-ran like three three or four different ones of these one cost echoes to try and get some more crit damage or trying to get some more attack and energy regen and stuff like that and i've noticed that it's just come to a point where i'm i'm wasting my wave plates uh and not really getting the return on investment like i was before in the beginning now that we're kind of in that you know min maxing certain part stage you would benefit a million times more from just knocking out and clearing this and this comes with two little caveats one is once you go down the middle path you're going to be looking at these weekly boss items 
So what I would do, or what I'm going to do, is uh, check out the characters that are going to be on my main three teams, which right now I'm building Gian, Verena, Mortefi, Calcharo, Yinlin, uh, Havoc Rover, possibly going into Spectral Rover as well, just for depending on if like the next reset of the Tower of Adversity offers a little bit different whenever it comes to like elements and stuff we need to use. The next couple of characters, I'm I'm kind of uh, passive on right now. I'm deciding who I want to build. Uh, Jian Shin, Encore, uh, definitely going to be building up Donjin a little bit more. And then from there, it, it, it's kind of open. I'm, I'm still deciding on that. But while I'm deciding, uh, if we go over here to like Varina, or if we go over here to Yinlin, I have talents or forte that I can continue on with right now. The only thing stopping me is these bad boys right here, the weekly ones. So if we look at each character, they're going to require one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's two weeks worth of materials on one single character if you want to max them out. Now, obviously this one and this one right here, we're not going to be at that for a while. Um, and especially like free to play who haven't refreshed or anything like that, you're not going to be there for a minute. So what I would say your main focus on is getting all of your main teams, middle forte circuit maxed out as much as possible, at least getting these two bad boys unlocked. So this you could probably get, I believe these drop two now, if I'm not mistaken, once you get to you, uh, un union level 40. I believe they have a chance of dropping two per run, possibly three. I don't remember. Uh, is there a way that I can look? Uh, I think we can look right here. Let's check real quick. Do, do, do. We, that boy, Gian sitting in the coldest spot ever. Uh, weekly challenge. So here we go. Oh, again, I guess it doesn't show me like the other ones do once we get that. But I believe I've gotten two bells in the past once I hit union level 40. So pick the characters that um, start with your main DPSs, obviously, because that's going to give you the most value in return on your investment, because it's going to be what you're usually having on the field the most is your main DPS with your rotators coming in and out, giving buffs or healing, whatever it is. But start with your main DPS. Take a look at which bosses they are required to, you know, get these bad boys and pick, I would say, two of them a week. And try to knock out as much as possible on those. Alongside that, go ahead and start farming these bad boys right here. Uh, these bad boys right here. Any of the, the materials that you would need. The good thing is, is a lot of characters uh, that we have out right now, especially the ones that like synergize together, they use a lot of the same stuff. So my Gion and I believe my um, Calcharo it was use the same thing so in return i could be building both and it's not wasteful to get the smaller ones because we can synthesize into those to the higher materials i will say though like getting these these yellow ones they're a pain in the ass right now because they're still not even guaranteed at union level 40 and i would say they probably drop like one out of every five to six runs maybe i've just been unlucky but i'm getting i've been getting like one to every five to six runs as we can see here uh, as well my calcharo and my Gion, they both use the bell, and I believe Verena does as well. Yeah, so I have three characters using the same material. Go through your teams, check out which ones uh, you need to push the Forte on. This is going to give you the greatest value right now towards your account. And once you're done, you're done. It's not like these materials are getting wasted and it's a chance to succeed at leveling them up. It's 100% guaranteed. You get these knocked out of the way. You get the best uh, just universal stats to your character overall. And then we can move on to the Echoes. Also, if you haven't pushed up to like the level 70 range or level 60 range, wherever you're sitting at, obviously do that first. I would do the talents next, then your weapon. I feel like the weapon would be like the third spot. It does give, give some good stats, but it's not beating what these talents are giving overall if you farm this versus farming the materials. And plus, we've been getting a ton of materials for the weapons anyway, so you should have like a, a good amount left over, especially if you're like swapping 
one or two of the weapons between a couple of your teams you're not really going to need to level up you know nine weapons theoretically i would say like probably four to five uh max is what you're going to end up leveling up and you can swap those between characters uh just for the time being until we get enough resources to just knock everyone's best and slot out but yeah Take this as you will. Um, I, I believe this to be the best path forward for us while we're kind of on this downtime. Because once this is done, it's done for good. We don't have to come back and worry about it unless they just add something into the future. Um, which would probably be way down in the future. It's not going to be anytime soon. But anyways, guys, thank you all for stopping by. I hope this brought you some insight and value to your account. And I'll see you guys in the next one.